Hello everyone, I'm Ernie and I am so glad you're here with us today. Today we are going to make some more nitric acid and this will be our third version and most likely it'll be my last version that I will make is because this version is basically strong enough for all the projects that I have been working up to this point and so I really don't need anything stronger and actually this is the easiest process of nitric acid acid that I made uh, even though I had a little bit of an accident but everything came out all right nobody got hurt everything was safe and so let's get into this project first off we're going to start off with 250 grams of potassium nitrate prills I'm using some technical grade potassium nitrate prills, otherwise known as KNO3. Last year, I had purchased a 55 pound bag of this potassium nitrate from Legends Mining Supply here in Sparks, Nevada for roughly $120. And the primary reason why I bought this potassium nitrate was to use this when I smelt my gold ore. Secondly, we're going to use this concentrated sulfuric acid. I purchased this one gallon of concentrated sulfuric acid from Ace Hardware and with using a $5 coupon, this gallon basically cost me $24. My total yield for this batch of 200 milliliters of nitric acid cost me just under $4 which comes out to 66 cents per ounce. The cheapest nitric acid I could find online would cost me $60 for 32 ounces. That's $1.87 per ounce. So there's a $1.20 difference in cost per ounce between a store-bought nitric acid and the nitric acid we're making today. Getting back to our potassium nitrate here in our beaker, we did add some distilled water about a half inch over the top of the potassium nitrate. I added enough water to cover the potassium nitrate about a half inch over the top of it to dissolve the potassium nitrate. We are heating our potassium nitrate in distilled water over our hot plate to dissolve the potassium nitrate. The solubility of potassium nitrate greatly increases with heat. The reaction of potassium nitrate in water is interesting because it's an endothermic reaction, meaning that it actually gets cold. And we can counter this reaction with our hot plate and get our potassium nitrate to dissolve. At this moment, it's pretty cold outside and it's about 40 degrees in my lab. And you can see the dissolved potassium nitrate, not only on my stir stick, but also inside the beaker that is already crystallizing because it's really cold. Up to this point, it's been almost an hour to get our potassium nitrate to dissolve. Our potassium nitrate is now dissolved. And now we will prepare to pour our dissolved potassium nitrate into our 250 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. 
At this point, it's important to understand that it is safer to pour the potassium nitrate into the sulfuric acid because when you mix the diluted potassium nitrate into the sulfuric acid, it causes an exothermic reaction, so it actually gets hotter just by mixing the two together. And when you pour the diluted potassium nitrate into the concentrated sulfuric acid, you will get a reaction, and sometimes a violent reaction. It's very important when you make this pour that you are wearing vinyl gloves and not nitrile gloves because vinyl gloves will protect you better than nitrile gloves, as I will inadvertently set an example for this. And so should you, but for me, it's when I get a splash, more than likely the diluted potassium nitrate will splash out instead of the sulfuric acid. What I should have done was use a larger beaker for this project, but unfortunately my larger beakers are being tied up with another project, but it would have saved me from this potential danger. Now, when this solution reaches the temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit, all of what is now potassium sulfate will settle out and will have what is now HNO3, which is nitric acid. This step of the procedure needs to reach the temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit for it to process correctly. It needs to be in this temperature for four to five hours. And since the temperature tonight is to reach 27 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to leave this solution outside overnight and we'll get back to it in the morning. It is now morning and I am going to pour our fresh nitric acid into our other beaker so we can use it for our projects. We poured out our nitric acid successfully without pouring much of the crystals into our new beaker. And we now have about 175 milliliters of fresh nitric acid. Only nitric acid can dissolve copper. I have our fresh nitric acid and our piece of copper in this beaker and we do have it heating on the hot plate because this will work quicker when it is heated. You can see the strength of our nitric acid and how it is working with this piece of copper. Also, I want to make a mention the aquaregia that's on the left of your screen is for a different project and has nothing to do with this project. From what I have learned and what I have seen from this reaction, and I don't have the means to test out the strength of our nitric acid, but it looks like it's about 55 to 60 percent and if you look inside this beaker you can see a little bit of crystals from the potassium nitrate. 
Well, this wraps up this episode and this process of making our nitric acid version number three. And if you enjoyed this process, smash that like button. And also I would like for you to leave me a comment below and let me know how you like this process. So I will know what kind of projects that you guys like to do. And also I would encourage you to share this episode on your channel so others can learn how to make nitric acid in this process. And also, hopefully it'll be a lot safer than what I did. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, I would like to encourage you to subscribe and to become part of our AU family. We would love to have you in the family. We are so thankful that you're here. We deeply appreciate your support and we will see you on the next one.